Richard Farley, why is now a good time to revisit the Wall Street wars that originally created the SEC? Because the same struggles and the same interests, really, that formed the foundational regulatory environment that's really existed now for 80 years, those same issues are arising now in terms of how we're going to respond to 2008. Uh, who are the people who are going to lead these institutions? What's, wh what are the agendas going to be? How do we resolve and solve an institutions? What's the role of the government in bailouts? All of these issues are rehashes, really, of what has happened in the past and, in my judgment, will continue to happen in the future. Well, the PCORA Commission mm -hmm. investigated the scandals that led to the 1929 crash. How do you draw parallels between those commissions and the investigations that followed the 2008 crash? Well, I, I think we're in a very different environment now, okay? Uh, PCORA went down, and really, no one thought he was going to do anything with it. The hearings have been going on for a year. There were no revelations of note. People thought they were a waste of time. And there was only about six weeks until that Congress would go away and the new Congress elected in, in 32 would take over. So no one had high hopes for it. But he called in the senior executives of Citibank, and he discovered things not even related to the crash. I mean, the biggest disclosure was that someone cheated on, on, on their taxes. But the bad behavior generally created the point of a spear to allow the regulatory changes to really get popular appeal. Uh, but you can't do that now. And I had a conversation with Barney Frank uh, on this very point, and I asked him that question. I said, why was there nothing equivalent to the, to, to, to the Pecora hearings this time around? And he said, well, you've got the cable news, you've got the internet, you've got people doing their talking points constantly, you have a cacophony of, of points of view that are out there. It was very controlled back then, right? You had no TV, you had radio and newspapers, and that was much easier to manage than what you have now in terms of media outlets and really, you know, a very hard messaging environment. Now, who knows in the future what might develop in terms of ways to harness this and get messages out, but now it's, it, it, it's very hard to do what was done back then. And in his view, and I think I agree with him, is that it's because of the proliferation of media outlets. Well, one thing that developed from the PCORA Commission was the SEC, and Joseph Kennedy, father of John F. Kennedy, became the first head of the SEC, right. and he was an alleged stock manipulator. Correct. So when people talk about the revolving door between yep. Washington and Wall Street, is it actually a good idea to have the fox guarding the chicken coop? Well, I think it depends on the fox. <laughs> At the time, it was the most criticized appointment that FDR had made to date. Uh, and he and people asked the question, why? Why did you appoint this individual who really wasn't a titan of Wall Street? He had made his... His, he made his bones on Wall Street defending the Hertz cab c company from a raid, and he did that very successfully. Then he went to Hollywood and made his first fortune restructuring the movie business. Then he came back in 1929 and wanted to establish himself as, I mean, today you would say it's a private equity firm or a large hedge fund, uh, but that was his uh, uh, agenda, and he wasn't really accepted by the e elite of Wall Street. In fact, there's an anecdote in the book where on the same day, he tried to get a meeting with J.P. Morgan, who had him wait in the lobby and then sent a clerk, that's enough time to speak with you today, you have to, have to come back. And then another Irish trader named Michael Meehan. Uh, and Meehan uh, was a lot like Joe Kennedy, except he was much more uh, wealthy and, and, and successful at the time. And, and Meehan listened to his pitch and said, that's interesting, but I'm sorry, we can't do business. And Joe Kennedy was furious. He wasn't getting the respect he thought he deserved. Ironically, the first big fish the SEC went after was Mike Meehan, that Joe Kennedy went after. Very but his, when he came in as SEC head, uh, the left wing of the Democratic Party was apoplectic. Uh, but over the course of the two years or so he was involved with the SEC as its first chair, uh, he turned around opinion and he ended up being, I think, viewed as uh, the best appointment Roosevelt made. Even though he wasn't a titan on Wall Street, he wasn't a re reformer, he was investigated by P Pecora for certain of his pools during those hearings. And Pecora himself wanted to be chairman and was furious that Roosevelt had chosen someone who you know, was not clean as a whistle on these issues. Well, you mentioned Barney Frank, and a lot of people on Wall Street right now 
mm -hmm. are saying that the Dodd-Frank legislation is really stifling activity on Wall Street. Do you think the pendulum has swung too far? There's too much regulation now, historically speaking? Yeah, I think it has, and I think it's always the case when there's a reform movement and laws are enacted, usually in haste, because there's a huge political pressure to get uh, a law passed. And believe it or not, um, the resistance by Wall Street to Dodd-Frank was less than the regulation of the exchanges and trading uh, when the 34 Act was enacted. Wall Street, through Richard Whitney, who would later be disgraced as the Bernie Madoff of his day, led a very uh, uh, effective resistance to that law and watered it down. Uh, and over time, the kinks get worked out. I think we're in the working out the kinks phase now in a lot of these laws, and I think they will change over time and become better. All right. Well, thanks a lot for coming on and talking thanks about a great book. Me. Terrific. And thank you for watching The Street.